Gymnastic. It's Kim Zemeskel, and it will take her out of one of the apparatus finals tonight. I've just spoken with a Dr. Jack Jensen. He's the team doctor. Kim Zemeskel has aggravated tendinitis in her, in her left wrist. We'll be talking with the doctor in just a minute to assess the seriousness of this injury. But Bella Caroli has told us he is taking Kim Zemeskel out of the vault. Now, he did acknowledge she was the first person on the apparatus. The scores build on that apparatus, so it is unlikely that she would have meddled in uh, that event. You saw Kim marching out tonight. Um, Kim Zemeskel will still be on the floor, the beam, the bars, because it's a precautionary measure. They're worried about her wrist and the force of the wrist hitting the vaulting horse. So again, uh, Kim Zemeskel is injured, but she will still be eligible to win three gold medals. And you know, last night after she fell off the uneven bars, she hit all her routines. Larry, she was so dejected. She was so desolate. And although these little girls appear larger than life on our TV screen, they're still just little children. You want to wrap your arms around them and tell them that everything's going to be okay, but you can't do that. All you can do is sit back and admire them because they are champions. They are competitors. And Kim Zemeskel is one tough little kid. We'll be keeping you posted from the Tacoma Dome. Thanks, Hannah. It's going to be a great night. Can't wait to get back. music under me before. Invigorating. A new kind of disc jockey. Welcome back. Day 10 of the 1990 Goodwill Games. Beauty and perfection. That's coming. To the Tacoma Dome for the final night of women's gymnastics. And my man on the scene, Jim Simpson. James? Larry, you should be out here. We have music behind us at all times. It is a big night. It is a final night of gymnastics. And it is for four apparatus, four golds, four silvers, four bronze. But Kathy Johnson, a great night, the silver team medal for the Americans on Friday, a disappointing last night. Hannah has talked about it. You have been with the American young ladies. How are they emotionally prepared, aside from Zemeskel's injury, for tonight's competition? Well, first of all, I was back in the warm-up gym uh, prior to competition, and emotionally, they're very down. They're a little depressed about last night's performance, which really kind of bothers me, because I don't want to see that take away from what they did for the United States, winning the silver medal, and they did come back very strong after that fall with Kim Zemeskel on the uneven bars. Physically, they're very tired as well. These athletes are not used to competing three days in a row, usually at major competitions. They alternate days of competition with the men. So it's, um, they are a little physically tired and a little emotionally down, but I'm hoping that they'll, they'll get up tonight. Capacity crowd here, better than 16,000. That should pump a little adrenaline, adrenaline, but let's find out what really is wrong with Kim Zemeskel down to Hannah Storm. Thanks, Jim. I'm here with a Dr. Jack Jensen, the team doctor. Dr. Jensen, what is tendonitis? Quickly and simply, what is Kim suffering from? Kim has some inflammation in the top part of her wrist, and it's uh, quite painful, and that's what's preventing her from balding with that. What does it feel like? What's it going to feel like when she grabs on to that uneven parallel bar? Is it going to hurt a lot? Well, she hasn't as much trouble with that, because mm -hmm. in the vault, your wrist has to come up so hard, and there's so much impact on it that she is having a tremendous problem with the vaulting, but seems to be able to do the uneven bars okay. Is this career threatening? We don't think so at this point, but uh, a good way to, for that to occur is to let her vault today and really hurt it. Thanks, Dr. Jensen. Jim? All right, Hannah. You're looking wide at the Tacoma Dome, our final night of gymnastics. Last night, Natalia Kalanina won the all-around title and here she is her first event of the evening moments ago and it is of course the vault this is actually her routine during the all-around competition where she scored a perfect 10 double layout the only 10 of the entire competition said it last night and I'll say it again she was just exquisite beautiful attention to detail she had tremendous difficulty throughout the routine including that middle tumbling run it's a full twisting double back that she tumbles right out of
Well, they say show business is coming into gymnastics. Is a little bit of clean enough. And just as they were the gymnasts to beat in the all-around and the team competition, they will definitely be the gymnasts to beat here in the event finals. Now, that was a 10 last night that just wrapped up the all-around championship. Moments ago, in the vault, her first performance of this evening. Well, I don't want to tip it off, but just take a look at this first vault. Performance in Yurchenko with a full twist and a perfect <laughs> landing. It's very difficult to say things are perfect, but that landing was perfect. You can't do it any better than that. She got a 9.95 on this vault. Just beautiful position. Technically very nicely done. And the all-important stuff landing. That was vault number one, 9.950. And in those apparatus finals, they will average the two vaults. They don't take the better of the two. They will average the two. And this was Natalia's second vault. Now, Natalia is capable of doing a double twisting Yurchenko. She opted to only do the full twist for her first vault, and I believe she's doing a handspring front with a half twist for her second vault. Of course, the rule for the event finals in vault, they have to do two different vaults from two different categories. And then both vaults are averaged together so that they both count. This wasn't as good as her first vault, but it's definitely comparable to anything else in the competition. Which gave her a 9.887 and an average of 9.918. At that time, it put Kalina in the lead. But hold on, there's another Soviet in the competition, and she is outstanding. This fall on TBS, Network Earth. Our changing planet, that work Earth. Tragedies and triumphs. Network Earth. People making a difference. Network Earth. You can make a difference. Network Earth. Your connection. This fall only on TBS. Patterson at 9, Williams at 11. Then the Walton presentation. <laughs> what a day. Hi, Mike Smith to see Mr. Patterson. <gasps> Mr. Patterson's tied up, but he'd like you to wait. There goes my schedule. I'm glad you called. The Walton spectrum changed. We have to talk to the supplier's name. OK. Your conference call is ready, sir. When you're on the road, nobody has more ways to help you than AT&T. Hope I haven't upset your schedule. No problem. AT&T, how can we help you? Clearing in the Tacoma area, and we're beginning to see uh, here once again. Here's Oksana Chusevitna of the USSR, 15 years old, from Tashkent. And watch this vault, her vaults of just moments ago. Handspring front pike with a half twist. A very nice landing, just a slight check for balance. She is the second Soviet in the vault. Logan Skaya, the world champion, is not competing in the ball. And Oksana is fairly new to the Soviet team. This is the first I've ever seen her compete. It's a front pike with a half twist. And as I said, all she had to do is check the balance on that landing. And that gave her a 9.950 equal to the first vault of Kalina. Soviets are so deep, and they've proven it here as they've proven it everywhere else in the world. As I said earlier, they must perform two different vaults from two different families. So completely different vaults. Makes it much tougher to meddle in this event. For those of you who fought, actively follow gymnastics in Salt Lake earlier this year in the Olympic Cup, Chusevitna was first in the all-around. A 
match this. Sukahara with a full twist. Very nice position in the air. Great height from the horse. She's a very, very powerful gymnast. We're looking at the vaulting champion right there. That's a gold medal. A 9.975 on her second vault. So she averaged 9.962 for the two vaults. That is an excellent ball. Superior amplitude on this ball. Good form. Very nicely done. The first of the four apparatus finals is over. Chusevitna, the Soviet Union, gets the gold. Kalinina gets the silver. And Gojian of Romania, the only Romanian here, gets the bronze. Remember, the Mesco was scratched from this event. Amy Scherer was the only American in this event. And Amy had a terrific first ball. Unfortunately, she put her hands down on that second ball. And naturally, since you have to count both balls, that dropped her right out of the lead. 15-year-old Oksana Shuchovitna. And here is Amy Scherer and what happened to her. The only American competitor. 15 years old also, out of Cincinnati. And of course, trains with Bella Caroli down in Houston. And she was a bronze medalist at the recent USA Championships on this event. Her first ball is a Yurchenko with a full twist in laid out position. It's just a round off entry. Problems with the landing. She did a terrific job for the United States during the team competition. She led off on every single event, which is a very, it's a very high pressure position for a young and fairly inexperienced gymnast. And Just a little Gabby too much said, juice. <laughs> the second time around, she put her hands down. So the first of four apparatus is over, and the gold medal has been determined. Shusevit of the Soviet Union, the gold, Kalina of the Soviet Union, silver, Gojin of Romania, bronze. Let's go to Larry. Thanks, Jim. We'll return to the last night of women's gymnastics and the uneven bars in a little while. Stay with me. The top Hungarian gymnast on the uneven bars. Matter of fact, Kenny said last night after she took the bronze in the all around that there's not much behind her in Hungary. Gymnastics has come almost to a complete halt in Hungary aside from this youngster right here, 16 years old. And a year ago in Europe, she won the European Championship in this event, the unevens. She was also the bronze all around European champion this past European Championships. <coughs> Very nice uneven bar work. It's a nice little original connection move. Something the judges are looking for. That's called a Ginger. Made famous by Eberhard Ginger, the male West German gymnast. She could have a little bit more amplitude in this routine. That release move should have been a little bit higher above the bar. It's a nice front giant there. Back giant with a full pirouette into a tuck double back oh. dismount. She's got the crowd at least. I don't know about the judges. And well, the of Hungary. You don't have to know much about gymnastics. You know you have to stick your landing. And this audience knows how important that is. And she is first up on this apparatus. It's a nice start for this event. It's going to be a terrific competition. A lot of good uneven bar workers, including Henrietta. She shows nice low bar work. Many of the gymnasts just get right up to the high bar, do the major release moves, but they don't do anything really interesting. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to remind you, please. She has a nice variety, of several different kinds of moves. But as I said, the release move should be a little bit higher up above the bar. Of course, the dismount, very high, good form. Score and a good nine, nine, eight, six, two. And of course, she is first up, and that is the score that she gets. There are two Americans, Betty Okino and Kim Zamasko, in this event, and only one Soviet, or at least a couple of the medals in this will not go to the outstanding Soviets, but Kalinina is to come later. This is Ava Rueda of Spain, where the Olympic Games will be held in a couple of years in Barcelona. And Eva Rueda also did very well at the European Championships, finishing fourth. And that was just back in May. 
She's a very, very strong, dynamic gymnast. You can see by her physical build. And by today's standards, a rather old gymnast for the women, 18. She opens with a Jaeger front. A couple little form deductions already. Unpointed toes. Reverse hex. So she's now completed two major release moves. Very important that you get all the levels of difficulty in. Watch this dismount. She cranks those two giants and there's a double layout flyaway. Eva Rueda of Spain. Amazing velocity she has to create to do the double layout the way she does it. It's a very difficult dismount. Just recently it's become a little bit more popular now that the bars are farther apart, spaced farther apart. They can generate a little bit more swing. Here's her first release move. It's called a Jaeger front. Again, look to see that on the regress, their shoulders are level with that bar. It's what the judges are looking for. This is the reverse hect. And again, she catches just level with the high bar. And watch this dismount. She really cranks these giants around. Strong tap at the bottom of the swing in order to get that rotation and maintain a layout position, which makes the dismount much more difficult. At the moment, awaiting her score, and waiting to come up is Lee Lee. She's waiting to come up, and there's Kim Zamasko, who did not go in the vault, but she is in this event. But before she goes, the other American in this event, Betty Okino, will be on the unevens. Remember, she's got tendonitis. Wrist here, 9, 8, 2, 5. So at this very young moment in the unevens, Onadi is first and Roy is second. But we have six more to go. Chinese have always been very, very good on the uneven parallel bars. And there is little Li Li of China, only 15 years old from the Guadong province. What really makes them spectacular on this event is their body position, their body line. All the handstands are so straight. The swing is very, very smooth. In the team championships on Friday night, she scored a 9-9-2-5. Li Li of China. And she does a fantastic move. She's the first person to do this move. She does a straight body front giant. Look at the line I was talking about. Reverse heck going the other direction. Much less common. And here it comes. She's going to set up. Look at that, a German giant. <gasps> she made a mistake. She usually goes into a reverse heck there. She left it out. It'd be interesting to see what the judges do with that. And a little hop at the end for Lini. And she normally sticks her dismount. I think she was thinking back in her routine where that slight mistake occurred. <laughs> and as I said, <laughs> they're they're a very receptive crowd for all of the women's gymnastics. <laughs> This is her first sequence. It's really quite beautiful. Straight front giant to a back giant with a half pirouette. She does a reverse hect going the other direction. Tremendous height on that release move. Now watch right here what this should have been. It's called a German giant. This is her last giant going into her dismount. A tuck double back dismount, very, very high. But she had some problem in the middle of the routine. She normally does a German giant into a reverse hect. She had to leave out the reverse hect part and just swing out of it. Not a major break, but it will be interesting to see what the judges do with it. And while we wait the judges, Betty Okina will be next. Our only regret is this is the final night of gymnastics. Three great nights with the men last weekend. There's Betty Okino, and this is the third and final night with the women gymnasts of the world. And we've had capacity or near capacity crowds all six nights. The Tacoma Dome is not through. Later on next week, there'll be four nights of figure skating from this same venue. Lili still waits for her score. And the judges are on the telephone. I told you they'd have a little bit of problem with this. It uh, could almost be considered an extra swing. She left out the element, but had to get out of it and move into the next element. And it was a little bit awkward there. Betty Okino waits. You've heard Kathy report that the girls are a little tired. 
They're a little upset about their performance of last night, but here they are in the crowd now. Amy Sher did not do well in the vault. This will be Betty Okino's first performance of the night. And several competitors after her, Kim Zabosko, will be on the same event. And on Friday, Betty Okino had the highest qualifying score in the uneven bars. Coming in tonight, yesterday she had a little bit of problem during the all-around competition. She caught her leg on the low bar when she performed her reverse head. So I'm sure that's going through her mind right now. She does not want to repeat that error. Now the judges are looking into their little screen, and now they've come with a 9, 6, 8, 7, so it did affect the score. Crowd, probably not hearing Kathy Johnson. I know they didn't, cannot understand why it's only a 9, 6, 8, 7, not realizing what she left out. Well, since she didn't break form, it didn't look like an obvious mistake, but it was a non-element. She did part of the German giant and then just stooped her legs through and went into a kip on the high bar. All right, on to Betty Okino, 15 years old, out of Elmhurst, Illinois. Reigns with Bella Caroli down on Houston. Her first appearance of the night, looking for a medal in the uneven bars. Keep in mind, the judges watch and count the elements of difficulty. There are requirements on these events. Betty hit a foot on one of the bars last night. Here's her first release move coming up right here. The Jaeger front, very nicely done. Here's where the problem was yesterday. It's a reverse hecked, way up above the bar. Beautiful. Exactly the way she would have liked to have done that yesterday. And the dismount, front with a hack. Perfect. Very nice routine. Two major release moves. Nice swing. Played a little safe on the dismount. That dismount is a <laughs> simple dismount compared to many of the dismounts we've seen in the competition. But she did it with no deductions. We can tell you that the judges took an extra deduction on the average score because someone spoke to the gymnast during the routine. And there are those deductions that the judges are She does her front giant. Nice high Jaeger front, well that above the bar. Is a fairly heavy penalty and was taken right off the average score. This happens frequently in the international gymnastics. And that's her reverse hacked again. And you don't like Great that amplitude. He's looking at Onadi's score of 9862, which is the top. And the announcer here has explained to the people here what happened to the score of Lili. There was a deduction because one of the coaches, obviously, during the routine, said something to her, a coaching comment. And that is a severe deduction in gymnastics. You are not allowed to coach during the competitive Here's routine. our new leader, Betty Okino, 9887. Not the 990 oh, or better she would like to have had, but it's good enough in the race for the medal in the uneven bars. At the moment, Betty Okino, Henny Onadi, and Mari Kusuge one, two, three. But Natalia Kalinina was one of silver tonight, a gold in the team competition, and is the all-around gold medalist, is up looking for yet another gold. She had a 9.837 on Friday in the team championship. She does very nice work here on the uneven bars. Very smooth. Always good form. Giant with a full pirouette to a nice high Delche. One of the only ones in this competition. Here, hip circle to handstand on the low bar. To her final release move, a reverse hecht. Giant swing. And a half in, half out dismount. Oh. Little hop on the landing. This is her best event. Katia Kalinina. Very nicely done, but you can see in her face, as with all the Soviets, they really want to stick those landings. They know that's what it's t what it's going to take to beat their teammates, if anyone. At the moment, as we said, Betty Okino, as you watch Kalinina, is in first place, and Zameskul is in the on-deck circle. She has such beautiful straight lines. Nice release move there. This is her reverse head back over the high bar, and she just has just enough amplitude there. Should really be a little bit higher above the bar, but the dismount is terrific. Very difficult, it's a full twisting double back. 
He needs to better nine eight eight seven which is owned by Betty Okino to move into first place. She actually has. Go ahead, yes. She actually has more difficulty in her routine, particularly because of the dismount. It's much more difficult than Betty Okino. She's first. Nine nine one two. And I'm sure that made the difference because Betty Okino also has very nice work on the uneven bars. Good form, just like Kalina now. Kalina now has a little more difficulty. Kalina is in first place. Okino is in second place. And the crowd is very aware that waiting to go now is Kim Zemeskel, 14 years old. Led the team to a silver on Friday, fell in this same event last night in the all around. So you can imagine what is going through her mind. Here's her first release move. This is where she had the problem. A front giant into a front somersault, and she's got it. She's got one more release move in the routine. The reverse hex coming up right here. And she's got that one as well. Nice routine so far. All she needs to do, good dismount, which she does very well. Yeah. A tight double back dismount. That's got to bring a smile. That's the first smile I've seen from her today. And I'm glad to see it. We're only John Shy yet to go to the American Chancellor. You can hear Bella say that made it up from yesterday. Here's her first release move after the front giant. And where she had the problem yesterday, she was too far away from the bar, but today. Perfect distance from the bar. And of course, the reverse hex done equally as well. It's just a very nice pike double back dismount way up above the bar. She even lays out for a short period of time in that first somersault. Gives it an extra flair. The Meskel waits. Kalinina has the lead. The Soviets have led in every event. Score for Kim. 9 9 0. Oh. Oh, that puts score. her down in second place. And Okino goes to third. But remember the Chinese and Zhang Sha is due up very good on the uneven bars. So don't count your chickens. And even Kalinina could be in trouble if Zhang Sha really hits. She had a 9.912 on Friday night, and if she does that tonight, she would tie Kalina for the gold. The judges are really doing a good job on this event. It's very difficult when you're talking about thousands of a point deductions and separating these gymnasts who are all very, very good on this event. But Kalina, now with the level of difficulty and the amplitude and form, right now should be the leader. High Ginger, back somersault with a half twist. Here's her front giant to her second release move way up above the bar. That is extra amplitude. Giant full pirouette. Comes her dismount, a tuck double back dismount with a kick out. Makes it much more difficult. Could it be good enough for the goal? This is going to be a tough call for the judges. There are two different types of routines, and it's hard to compare them. Kalina's dismount was difficult in a different way. You know that Kalina, you know that Zemeskel are both going to medal, but what medals will they get? Will it be Jung Sha? She does the release move so well and also moves to the low bar. Very smooth. She has a few tiny little form breaks, though, throughout here, and it just depends on how tough the judges are going to be, because we're looking at it in slow motion, so, of course, we can see the slight bent legs there. The Soviets have just been gold medaling all their way through the gymnastics, men and women. This is nice here. She kicks out of that double back. Most gymnasts just stay in their tuck. It makes it a little more difficult and a lot prettier. Dong Sha, only 15 years old from the Shandong province of China. This is her best event. In the China Cup, she won this event. And as a junior, she won the all-around last year. But now here she is, 
And here's Kim Zamasko with that tendonitis in her left wrist. We're still awaiting to see the score of Jung Sha. And there it is, 9-9-6-2. So the gold medal scheme of the Soviets has been broken. Jung Sha of China takes the gold, the lean enough of the Soviet Union, the silver, and Zamasko of the USA, the bronze. Two more apparatus to go. But on the final night, the Soviets have failed to win a gold in at least one event. Back to four. Well, that's really next up. Next up is Hannah Storm. Hannah? Thanks, Jim. Well, we're going to take a break right now before we get to the beam and talk about the European champion on that event and the overall world champion, Svetlana Boganskaya. You won't see her smile much, although I did get her to smile at me earlier today. It was the first one I've seen from her the whole competition. Some say that she's aloof, possibly a little bit distant. She's a very serious young woman. She's very sensitive. You don't see her smile because, well, frankly, she, she's very sensitive about her teeth. She's also sensitive about other things, and I think that shows in some of her routines. Last night, she was in tears. She finished second to her younger teammate, uh, Natalia Kalinina. She was in tears as she was standing on the podium. And this young 17-year-old lady has shed more than her share of tears over the past two years. My journey to the Goodwill Games nearly ended less than two years ago. Just days after the 88 Olympics, my longtime coach, Lyubov Miramanova, died. She committed suicide. She was like a mother to me. When I lost her, I lost the thing most dear to me in life. After her death, I pretty much decided I wasn't going to do gymnastics anymore. I wanted to quit. But then I thought, what else can I do? And I decided to continue. I have always been serious. But that doesn't mean I don't show emotion. I believe a gymnast should try to put her whole soul into a routine. Someday, I'd like to become a coach, like Lubov Miromanova. I would like to train little children. Dance special, it is that which has made a Boganskaya such a standout as a gymnast. So tonight, as we watch her routine, she will carry some of that beauty and some of that grace with her. Jim? All right, Hannah, this is young Mari Kusuge of Japan. She has to lead off in three of the four events tonight, only 14 years old, and of course she is on the beam. She had a terrific mount, round off to three layout step outs in a row. Very difficult. <laughs> it's one of the special requirements on the balance beam combining dance elements directly connected. The can spring, layout, back pipe, back hand spring, see song jump. Mari really does some of the more difficult routines here in the competition. She usually dismounts with a round off, full twisting double back. Boy, she saved that landing. Very, very low, so she had to pull it around, which made her over-rotate and take that big step backwards. The youngster from Tokyo, Mari Kusuge, and it is Kathy Johnson's opinion that this event, the beam, is a wide open event for nearly all of the competitors with a chance to medal. So much can happen on the balance beam. Here is that mount. 
unbelievable difficulty here. Three layouts in a row. You can see exactly how precise the feet must land on the balance beam to show no balance breaks. Yeah. And the dismount, a very difficult one. She's a little bit slow on the rotation, low on the landing, so she pulls it around. And that makes her over-rotate because her feet get too far under her. She has to step back. Now, Mari awaits the first score of the evening on the beam. Well, we'll tell you that Li Li is, China is next up, followed by the two Americans. 9 8 0 she goes. 9 8 0 for Kasuge of Japan. I have a feeling this is going to be a very exciting balance beam competition. Good competitors here, and like I said, anything can happen on this event. Now, 15-year-old Li Li of China, who got the deduction because of coaching during the uneven bars. She has a terrific mount here. Jumps to handstand, similar to a Healy spin that the men do on the parallel bars. I always enjoy their choreography on the balance beam. It's very creative. Back hand swing to two layout step outs. She has quite a bit of grace and elegance for a gymnast so young. And lots of flexibility. One of the trademarks of the Chinese gymnasts over the past several years is their tremendous flexibility. And a oh. backspin on the balance beam. I can't do that on the floor, so I'm jealous. <laughs> Many here thought she might have fallen. Also fulfilling some of the requ requirements, combining dance and acrobatic elements together. Preparing for her dismount, she does a round off back handspring, double twist, and a good landing. This could be a night for the Chinese. Young Shaw has already taken the gold in the unevens, and that's a fine performance by Lili. Lots of difficulty within the routine. Very nice choreography, very clean movement. I love the mount. Jump to handstand. Now watch as she lifts that one hand, twists down to the balance beam. They really show perfection in movement. Look at the toe point and look at the exactness on that backspin. That is not easy. She made it look easy, but it is not easy. Round up back handspring, double twist. Not the most difficult dismount you'll see here tonight, but she does it very well, gives away no form deductions, and sticks the landing. The applause you hear as they're watching here on a big screen, what you've been seeing at home on your TBS screen. Thus, the applause for her, and they have a close-up of her face just as you see. In the meantime, Betty Okino, who was first in this event in our national championships in Denver some weeks ago, is waiting to go. And she, like everybody else, is waiting for the score of Lili. Betty. The officials again on the phone. Betty really handled the pressure during the team competition extremely well. She scored a 9.9 .9 on Friday during the team competition to qualify for the balance beam finals. Everybody knows the man on your left. That's Bela Garoli, but on your right is Marta, his wife. Also she, is, she is the beam coach. She does a terrific job with these kids. Gets them very prepared for competition. 9, 8, 7, 5. At the moment, she's the leader, and again, the crowd thought she should have gotten better. See, it's very difficult going early up in the lineup. The judges are a little bit afraid, tentative rather, to give the highest scores early on because they have to have room to build on, if need be. Betty Okino, this is her event. She does a 
straddle press to handstand as her mount. But walk over right into a sea song. Betty has a lot of dance training. It really shows on the balance beam. Here's her first tumbling skill. Cans to two layout step outs. Very nicely done. low not quite showing enough flexibility on those leaps but those are such minor deductions here's her double turn very risky <gasps> beautifully done I never see her miss that and that's a very risky element nice handstand showing all different positions finally lowering to her plans and into straddle skip Springs to a tuck double back. Well, pretty, big, pretty big step on the landing. She got her feet under her a little too much as well. Just like we saw Mari Kasuga well, doing, of course, then you're forced oh, to take yeah. that step back. <laughs> you, you could hold it. <laughs> I know. All right. I'll put that on. And just a note about Lili's balance beam performance. Her start value score after the judges check for difficulty and special requirements was a 9.9. So it was judged from the 9.9. .9. So a 9.875 out of 9.9 is not bad. Here's that terrific double turn. She does it as well as anyone in the world. Very few people do that skill on the balance beam. Beautiful flexibility and balance and strength. And of course, a gymnast must have all of those abilities and make it look easy at the same time. Two back handsprings to a tuck double back dismount. You can see she landed a little stiff-legged. Her hips went too far back, and it made her take that step. Betty's waiting for her score. Kim Zemeskel of the USA is next up. And later on, Anadi Kalinina and Boganskaya, who finished one, two, three in the all-around last night, with Kalina, of course, getting the gold. Logan Sky the silver and on the the bronze. They is what is the best goal? Nine eight six two. Nine four eight. Nine four eight six two. So that puts Betty Okino for the moment behind Levy in second place. And Kim Zemesco, a homegrown Houston product. He showed up at Corolla's gym when very young. She's just 14 years old, four feet five, 72 pounds, and here she goes but a tremendous ability to concentrate and focus. Nice handstand mount to a reverse plunge. Front handspring to a seesaw jump. Two layout step outs, her most difficult pass. Done very nicely. Two switch leg leaps in a row. Handspring layout step out down to one knee. She's moving very well so far, showing a lot of confidence. Preparing for her dismount. To win this competition on bounce beam, you've got to stick your dismount. And yeah. there it is. <laughs> the last thing the judge All sees. Right. She hit the entire routine, but you really All have right. to put the icing on the cake. I and know. Stick the <laughs> All right. Now that was a good one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Good job, guys. There weren't many <laughs> smiles before this competition, but they're smiling now. No, let's see now. 
This is a nice position in the reverse plunge. She lowers down with the one leg bent. That's a pretty picture. And of course, the dismount very high in the air, and she just drops it right in for a nice landing. Nine, nine, oh, and the moment she is the leader. On Friday, Kalina may yet to come to the nine, nine, oh, and Bogan Sky did a nine, nine, three, seven. So, they are still to go along with Hornady of Hungary. At the moment, Zemeskul is in first, Levy second, and Okino, another American, third. Back at the Tacoma Dome on the beam event. And while we're away, John Wanning has turned in a score that has put her in first place ahead of Zemesco. A 9-9-5-0. Oh. And again, the Chinese, who won the uneven, are threatening to take a second gold of the evening with the two Soviets yet to go. Next up, though, is Henny Onidi of Hungary, who was the bronze medalist of the all-around. She had a 9.750 in the team on this event. First pass, I can't spring, lay out, step out. That's a very nice element. Just a half twist. In a back handspring as a walk over out. Gainer layout step out right into another layout step out. Very difficult. This is a nice move. Back roll extension right to the end of the balance beam. Very risky. You can go too far and you have no beam to go to. She has been very solid this entire competition. And her dismount, round off, triple twist, beautiful dismount, very, very difficult. One of the only ones being done. Now, Many this is Jeanette. John Wanning, excuse me, Kathy, who is our current leader, and we are going to have a chance now to go back and see part of her routine before the Soviets step on the beam. She was absolutely beautiful on this event. She does very difficult passes. Watch this one right here. That can't bring two layout step outs. She was next to perfect. And the dismount, round off, double back, a perfect landing. And that gave her a 9.95 and put her 5 hundredths a point ahead of Kim Zamaskal of the USA. Lili of China is third. 9.812 for Onady, and that will put her in fifth place behind fourth place yes, Betty Okino. We are now down to the two Soviets. The all-around champion of last night, Kalinina, and Boganskaya, two members of the team champions. Kalinina, remember, at a 9-9 in the team championship on the beam, that would not be good enough to take over the lead tonight. She mounted with a round-off back handspring onto the balance beam. It's a full twisting back handspring swing down. Very difficult move. She shows such poise on this event. It affects every move. <laughs> 
Switch leg leap into a back roll extension. It's a more creative combination. Hands bring to a layout step out. Three C-Songs in a row. She's fulfilling all of her requirements and more. Now watch this dismount. She also does a full twisting double back. Very difficult to land, but look at that. Fights for the landing. It's a more difficult dismount than the double back that we've seen. Sarah Kalinina has two golds coming in tonight, two silvers tonight, and looking for a gold in this event with the goddess Bogenstaya, the last to go. But that is your leader still as of this moment, John Wanning. You can see here, excellent toe point, perfect extension on every skill. Something Kalina does so well. Two back handsprings to a layout step out. Again, see the perfection in her body alignment. A very difficult dismount, full twist on the first somersault and then pulls that second one around and almost a stuck landing. And we have a brand new leader for the gold. The all around champion, a team champion, Natalia Kalinina, a 9-9-6-2. John Wanning of China is second. Zamaskal of the USA is going for the bronze, but there remains the goddess. The world champion, Svetlana Boganskaya. She opened with a front tuck mount right into a Sison. Right off the bat, she does back handspring, two layout step outs. Showing her combination, it's called the Gymnastics Acro Series, combining dance and acrobatic elements. step out. She's very aggressive on this event. You can see the sharp movement. Her style's a little bit different. Preparing for her dismount. She knows she has to stick this dismount. Double back. Oh, little hop forward on the landing. And you know, right then, if they can take that deduction, when you have to beat a 9.962, there's no room for deduction. Lina at the moment is first. Zhang of China is second. Zemeskal of the USA is third. But it all depends on the scores for here, how they will actually finish in the middle race in the B. The music you hear in the background, the next rotation, the final event of the evening will be the floor exercise. All of the beauty and all of the music of a great women's gymnastic event. You are truly watching what will be considered one of the best gymnasts in the world in the history of gymnastics. She has dominated the sport over the past few years. World champion, European champion. Just needed to stick that landing, but we'll see what the judges do with it. Moment she's running over to perhaps her best event, and that is the floor exercise. The final event of the gymnastics here in the 1990 Goodwill Games. We are in the Tacoma Dome, and still there has been no score yet posted for Svetlana. Here it is, 9937. So they take first and third. Kalinina gets yet another goal. That's her third. Jong of China gets the silver, and Boganskaya of the Soviet Union gets the bronze. Zemeskal finishes fourth, Okino sixth.
back with the wonderful floor exercises and pan has just gone the first of the floor exercise we're waiting for her result and coming up will be Henny Onadi who had a 9875 on Friday in the team championship in this event at the moment Kalina is the story though with three golds and two silvers thus far gives a mescal as the best score if you're counting medals for the United States with the team silver and a bronze on the unevens tonight and don't leave out the Chinese tonight because they have come up with a gold medal. Zhang won in the unevens. And Lili was right in into the beam so until the last moment. 9-3-2-5 for Kasuge, who had some real problems on the floor. And now, Kathy, we come to Henny Orton. Henrietta does some of the most difficult tumbling passes in the competition. A good variety of difficulty, more importantly. tied for third or for the bronze medal in this event at the recent European Championships, just behind Boganskaya and Groshkova of the Soviet Union. She opens, whip back, through to a full twisting double back. Pike's position, extremely difficult pass. one of the best, if not the best, triple twist being done by one of the girls here. Very nicely done. Very few gymnasts do that anymore because they have trouble with the landing and trouble getting that twist around. Double twist, punch front, and this is not her last tumbling pass. This is just a little side tumbling pass to throw in. Ends with a pike double back. Another good landing. As I said, a lot of difficult tumbling passes. Not three passes, but four passes. Takes a lot of energy to do that. Last night, the bronze medal in the Goodwill Games in the all around. And tonight, looking for medal in the floor exercise. Any Onady of Hungary, 16 years old from Bekiskaba. Here's her first pass. She does a whip back right here through to a full twisting double back or a full in in piked position. Here's that triple twist. Count them. It's great. One, two, three. Finish it and drops it right out of the air. Nine, eight, seven, five. Or Henny Onadi with two Americans to follow. She's shaking her head saying, what do I have to do to get a 9-9 nine nine here? She had a 9-8-7-5. Same score on Friday night. Here's Betty Okino at a 9-8-8-7 in the team competition. <laughs> Preparing for her final 
tumbling run. It's important she sticks this. Tuck double back. Very nice routine. Doesn't quite have the same difficulty as, say, Henrietta Onodi and some of the other gymnasts coming up, but she did everything very well, very cleanly. But the flag went out. Yeah. Of course, going out of bounds, that's one-tenth of a point deduction. Here's that first pass. She does a full twisting double back in tucked position. She lands right near the line and tries to stay in. But I guess her heel just went right over the edge. Kim Semesco won this event on Friday night in the team championship with a 9-9-3-7, and she is Betty Okino's teammate, and she is waiting for Betty's score before she begins. Here's her final tumbling run. Tuck double back dismount. Here it is, 9-7-1-2. At the moment, she's in second place. But here's Kim Zemesko, a silver in the team, a bronze early this evening in the unevens, and trying to duplicate her score of the team championships when she was first with a 9-9-3-7. Kim is very dynamic on this event. Good tumbler. She has a lot of energy in her dance. Very effective music because the audience can really get into this music. And you'll see later on in the routine they do just that. Her first pass is a pike, full twisting double back. And the audience is in it. The audience always loves that part. Here's her middle pass. This is her best one. Three whip backs due to a tuck double back dismount. And again, that's always a crowd favorite. Almost as if she's winding up for her final tumbling run. You can hear Bella saying, strong, strong, strong. Double back very high. And very strong. And there's that smile back where it should be on Kim Zemesco's face. The Bassetti crowd loves Kim Zemesco. And so does Bella. <laughs> The question is, is, with both and Skaya and Alina and I yet to come, will it be good enough? The one thing a gymnast has no control over, what the judges give the rest of the competitors, you can only do your best, and that's what Kim has done. Piked, full twisting double back. And this middle tumbling run is very exciting. Three whip backs through to a... Double nine, back. Nine, one, two. One, two. Not as good as the other night, but she's got the lead at the moment. Nine, nine, one, two for Kim Zemesco. Final apparatus, final night of women's gymnastics, and still to come, Boganskaya and Kalinina of the Soviet Union. Women's floor exercise. Kim Zemesco did not quite match her 9.937 of Friday night of the team with a nine, nine, one, two. On Friday night, Boganskaya, who is next up, had a 9.925 to finish second behind Zemesco. And a 9.925 now would, of course, take the lead. And this is Svetlana's favorite event. She's very creative here, very expressive. Uses the music very well. Now, that is a look.
Mike Bull twisting double back. One and a half twist due to a tuck double back. Very difficult pass. It's a lot of tricks in one tumbling run, especially for a taller gymnast. For all of you who want to start calling gymnastics girls' gymnastics instead of women's gymnastics, Boganskaya can change your mind. Finishes with a double back. Seventeen years old, she's still competitive with the youngsters coming in. And she has a little something that they don't have. You can see the seasoning. A little more maturity in her moves. She doesn't quite have the same kind of difficulty that some of the younger gymnasts coming in have. She has now had a great goodwill game. The team gold, the all-around silver. Remember, she is the world champion. And a bronze here tonight on the beam. This was her first tumbling run. Perfect form in that full twisting double back in pike position down to the toe point and a one and a half twist here tumbles right out of it through to a tuck double back slightly cowboys that and that is a slight deduction now we're trying to get the gymnast to move away from that type of somersault nine nine six two she is our leader but remember the Tata Kalina with all those goals still awaits but Boganskaya is now the leader Zemeska is second medals already and two silver and in the floor exercise and she's the final competitor of this evening and of this meet last night on this exercise had a perfect 10 looking for yet another gold and it's almost going to take another perfect 10 to get that gold medal on this event Boganskaya has a 9.962 with a double layout. Very nice again and just manages to stay in bounds. Very expressive in her dance. Shows off the dance training that all the Soviets have. Bolters and double back, tumbles out of it. Back to a very elegant layout step out. And quite a change of pace. Here's her little wiggle. Somehow that doesn't quite fit in there, but <laughs> she makes it work. Full twisting double back. Very difficult dismount. Most of the girls are doing double backs at the end. The question is the order of finish. Kalina Noah with a 10th last night. Remember, Bogan Sky looking for her first individual goal as a 9-9-6-2 on this event. And Kim Zemeskal apparently is going to wind up with her third bronze, but wait for the judges and let's look again at Natalia. And you'd never know it, but this is one tired girl. Three days of competition, competed every single event, 12 routines in three days, and has not let down yet. Near perfect on every routine. Tremendous difficulty packed into this routine. And of course, another full twisting double back. And she is the top medal winner in the women's meet. Three goals, two silver, maybe a fourth gold, maybe a third silver. Nine, nine, 
nine six two will share the goal. Score is Nine nine six two. And there you are, both with the same score. They will share it. I think they'll be happy with that. Melina gets her fourth goal, and the world champion Bogan Scott gets her second goal. The other was in the team, and the best goal for the second time tonight winds up third. She had the bronze in the uneven and has the bronze here in the floor exercise. Let's go back to Larry King. The Soviet Union won the first rotation, the vault. Kim Zamasko did not go in that. And then Gong Sha, the Chinese broke through for gold and the uneven bars in which Kim Zamasko got a bronze. In the third rotation, the balance beam, it was Kalinina. And then of course you saw her not with the perfect 10, but enough to share with Boganskaya the floor exercise and thus, regrettably, but all good things, as the cliche goes, must come to an end. It has been amazing 10 days of gymnastics here, actual six days of competition, the men and now the women before capacity crowds. It has been a joy to watch. I love watching gymnastics progress in terms of difficulty, yet still maintain the grace, the beauty, the artistry of the sport. I love seeing the spirit of competition, and most importantly, the happy faces after routines well done. And we had it all tonight. All right, let us go back in time now. We said it began a week ago, Friday night. That was a team championship between the men and uh, on that particular night, the United States did get a silver medal behind the very powerful Soviets. Lance Ringdahl was a leader there in helping and then later won the bronze and the all around. And then on the high bar, shared a goal. The only American goal to this meet. This is Sherba in the individual ball. He got a perfect 10. And then in the individual floor, Valeri Liukin. For a goal. When the men left the Tacoma Dome, the women came in led by Kim Zemesko, who was first in the team championships, that did not count. And Boganskaya, the goddess, the world champion. Boganskaya missed, though, in her first event. She's performing the reverse heck and just slipped off. Very uncharacteristic. And the tears came. And Zemesko had a good uneven to help the team win the silvers the men had done. And again behind the Soviets in the team championship. This is past Friday night. But then there came, well, as it comes to most gymnasts, those moments you prefer not to have happen. And the heartbreak that you could see when Kim Zemesko missed her release move on the uneven bars. And Boganskaya was not to have been in the all-around, but the Soviets put her in, and here she's on the floor. She did a beautiful floor routine, came back to win the silver in the all-around. And you just can't duplicate what Kalina did last night with a perfect 10 in the floor. For the goal. In the all around. And now we come from a week ago Friday through what happened this weekend to tonight. Kim Zemesko winning her bronze. The beautiful uneven bar routine, one she wished she had done yesterday, but it sure made up for it. And Boganskaya tonight, this is her best event. She wound up with the silver. This is her first time in line. Check that. She wound up with Perfect. sharing the gold with this person, Natalia Kalinina. The Soviets are here. There's no question of that. The Chinese, you can see from tonight, are coming on. Bellacaroli said yesterday, Kathy, that uh, he's encouraged by what he's seen. Not but what happened last night. They had some glitches. But the youngsters, they're inexperienced in international competition to do as well as they have done. Everyone should be encouraged by the way the Americans perform to compete as well as they did against the best in the world. And the Soviets right now are the absolute best. They have two years before the Olympic Games in Barcelona, and I think they should have a bright future in these next couple of years. Our thanks to you, Kathy Johnson. And now Hannah Storm is down with the man who's going to tell us himself, Bella Carolla. Thanks, Kathy and Jim. I am here with Abella Caroli. Bella, can you describe your feelings after this weekend, the Americans coming so close to the Soviets on Friday night and the rest of the weekend? Sure, that was a pretty stormy weekend for us um, with all ups and downs, but I'm very, very glad. Finally, we see some young, really up-and-coming generation on the podium and standing tall and strong. And I hope, you know, that's, that's just the beginning of many, many victories from now on. 
what does it tell you? How good are the Americans? Can they pull even with the Soviets? Probably the best statement is, if we're looking back last year, these kids have been only juniors on our Olympic Sport Festival competing. And now, up in the international podium, if even not in the gold, but they're right, right next to that. And that's very important for us. Does this set our team up well politically and emotionally for the competition in Indianapolis, the Worlds, next year? I'm very positive. We are in a very good shape. We got a lot of respect and now on the international so-called politics, what the judges are, are representing, we gain a lot of respect, a lot of recognition do, uh, during this meet. Tell us about that little girl that you call a sleeping cat with a tiger's soul. Were you worried about her before today's competition, the injured Kim Zemesko? Hello, well, Kim. Uh, sure, she made a uh, tremendous uh, effort in order to finish the meet and she did not want it to drop she didn't want it to to go out from the competition even though the medical recommendation was to stop and uh, winning her pain and winning her a uh, little trouble she did find that and ended up with two medals and i'm very proud of her thanks a lot fella and larry that wraps it up from the tacoma dome i'm headed back to seattle and we're headed back to you thanks anna by the way